Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to draw a hexagon grid using a very few tools. So first, we're going to get ourselves a set or a bunch of white paper. I've got a whole bunch because I'm working on a glass tabletop and we want our compass point to be able to actually stick into it. We're going to need an eraser, a straight edge, and a pen or two. So using these tools, we're going to make a hexagon grid. So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, determine the uh, length of an edge of our hexagon. So our original hexagons here, we're just going to base this all off the length of one edge of one of those hexagons. So I'm going to have an arbitrary point set. I'm just going to choose the size of my eraser. So once we have that set, so our compass is set, all we're going to do is we're going to stick it in the paper and we're going to very lightly draw a circle. So now we have one single circle with the center point set. So what we want to do is we want to go about directly upwards. I want this one to be fairly <clears throat> square to our square piece of paper. So I'm going to go up, stick the point in, and I'm just going to mark all of the edges. My left hand has the shakes. So you want to be about as precise as possible. Okay, and then once we have all those points set, um, we can actually go ahead and draw our first hexagon. So this is how all of our hexagons from here on out will be drawn. So I just take a pen, go between the two lines, Just like that, oops, we have our first hexagon set. So that's the basis of how we're going to be um, drawing all of our hexagons here. So what I'm going to do next is I want to find the center of our next hexagon. Now, the thing about hexagons is they're not on a perfectly square grid. The center of the side hexagons are all in line, but the center of the vertical is off by a little bit. So, an interesting bit about these hexagons is the reason this whole technique works is because the radius of the circle is equal to the size of the edge. So, if we want to find the center of our next hexagon, what we can do is using two points Gently scribe, a little X marks the spot, and I hope that comes up on camera for you guys, and then I just take the center point, and I go ahead, and I draw myself another circle. Oh no. There we go. So you can ignore that. Whoopsie doozle. That's another good reason to um, go gently. So we're going to do the same thing for each one. We're just going to go back and forth finding our centers.
All right, now that we've found all these centers, what we're going to do is we're going to find the vertexes of each of the hexagons that will be centered in each of these circles. So to do that, it's the same thing as the first one, where all we do is we take the intersection of two circles, and wherever these intersections of two circles are, we go and we draw a little line. I really should not be lifting my pen off the paper, pencil, excuse me, from the compass. Let's draw little marks on each one of these circles. Just like that. And then we go again. Okay, so this is a perfect example here of why I'm doing center out, then both of these vertexes out, and I'm getting three lines. Now hopefully the camera will um, focus in on that, but you can see that my pencil width is uh, pretty large in comparison to the point of the compass. So by having three lines, I can tell that I need to point the point of my compass right at the intersection of all three of those lines. And that averaging out should give me better results, uh, and this is important when you're trying to make uh, larger hexagon grids. So I will just keep on drawing my intersections. For all of these points. And because of that, it's also uh, important that you have a sharp pencil. A sharp pencil will give you smaller lines, which will leave less ambiguity when you are uh, trying to find the center point of each and every one of your circles. And we can see there I knocked my pencil. So all I'm going to do is erase that line. I've already reconfigured it so that actually we can go all the way back home. The distance between the point of the pencil and the point of the compass is equal to the original edge length or the width of the eraser, whatever uh, measurement you're using. And we continue finding centers. Okay, so here we can see that the distance from the distance from this point to there is my compass. My compass is from here to here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to split the difference and take that as my new point. This happens because my grid is beginning to drift. And we see here I'm likely going to run into the same problem. Yeah, so it's really starting to drift. I'm actually going to stop at this point. I'll say to hell with all these guys. And I'll show you the secret sauce of our, um, our grid pattern here. So now what you think you could do is you could just start connecting all the dots. And yes, you could do that. But we're going to play off something called the Gestalt Principles. Now, humans uh, have evolved for many, 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 many years to uh, have visual pattern recognition. And in nature, essentially what that means is we can use our eyes, say there's no hexagon here, or even, we won't even use a hexagon. Using our eyes, I could tell you, draw me a line between these two points. 
and your eyes could very naturally, your eyes and brain working in concert, could very naturally draw the line between here. Or I could say between here and here, which just so happens to line up with the bottom of our current hexagon. Or if it were like that, I suppose. So, with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're not going to do every single hexagon. We're going to draw every other hexagon. So I guess I should use a pencil so I can erase these later. So we're going to do this one. We're going to do this one. Right? Every other one. So now, I only have to draw one, two, three, four, five, six more hexagons. Okay, so here we have our beautiful, wonderful, fantastic uh, grid of hexagons. Now, earlier I was talking about our Gestalt principles, and we may see where this is going now. So we've got a bunch of all alone points in this here ring. All I'm going to do is I'm going to mark each and every one of these intersections. Hopefully not forget anything. And once all those are marked, and I'll hopefully make sure I don't get leave any scuffs on the paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase all of my paper marks, all of my pencil marks. All right, now we can really see those Gestalt principles coming to work. I don't know about you guys, but my eyes are absolutely drawing lines straight down through here, straight up through here, and straight through here. So, we're going to please our brains by filling in the remainder of those missing lines. And to do this, you can see how far off those guys are supposed to be parallel, much like these guys, much like these guys, and much like these guys. So that could be due to my uh, compass not actually being a locking compass, and it, uh, I don't know how to demonstrate this, but like, it doesn't take much to accidentally move this thing off a little bit, and also you want that uh, fine tip, so mechanical pencils in your compass works fantastic if you're looking for perfect perfection of the perfect worlds. But me, I am okay with imperfections because everyone has them and I am willing to show mine to the world. So, I was about to draw a straight line from here to here. That would have been incorrect. What I want to do is draw from these points. So we're drawing in a slightly lighter blue. I want to cheese it a little bit and I guess try and combine my lines as much as possible. I'm trying to play that efficiency game. It's not perfect, but I don't care. And just like that, it's magical. I guess one thing I could have done is I could have selected off the rest of those points, but tell you what, I can let's see if I can get this thing to crimp in on itself. I am still able. It's already screwed up a little bit. I find turning the pencil 180 degrees gives you the uh, sharp point. Oh boy. Also want to make sure that the point is somewhat lined up with the point of the pencil. There we go. Alright, so I can still see the circles because I totally 
forgot to mark the... I'm sure you'll light me up in the comments about neglecting these poor external vertices. This guy will pretend he's perfect. You are beautiful. All right, so what am I doing here? Um, hopefully you guys can see this. So what I'm gonna do is along this arc, the one that I built off the center, I'm just gonna pick the center point on that and that's where I'm going to draw my two connecting lines. So using our trusty rusty plastic straight edge, I'm not going to lift my pen off the paper so that I get that nice gorgeous crisp vertex betwixt my two edges. Shiver me timbers. And there we go. Going back to our Gestalt principles. Look very closely, look very hard, and tell me. How easy is it to see that both of these guys are pointed inwards and both of these guys are pointed outwards? You want to draw a line, but it doesn't quite work out sometimes. So, we know the imperfections, but if you go show this to someone else in the world, they're going to say it looks damn well near perfect to them. And that's good enough for me. So, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it may be due to your geographical location. And, uh, ciao.